Hey everybody, it's Alyssa. Real quick before we dive into this week's episode, I need to tell you that I did something real dumb. Britt and I were on a show called The Creeptastics last week, and I bragged about how people tell me that our sound quality is really good for an indie podcast. Of course, the universe was having none of that, likes to keep me humble, said, hey Alyssa, little Miss Braggy Pants, how's your sound quality sound when... I randomly disable your mic and you end up recording your portion of the podcast through your native laptop microphone. The answer is not great. Doesn't sound terrible. Sounds like I'm on a Zoom call, but my apologies for my portion of the sound quality. Brit sounds gorgeous and beautiful as always. It's a really fun show we put together for you this week. So I really hope you enjoy it and we'll get our shit together again next week. So haunt me later. I'll haunt you later. Good night. Welcome. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skelly Tales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? Alyssa, you know how when you're taking a shower and you have a hair full of shampoo Mm -hmm. and it comes time, got to rinse my hair, and you're about to close your eyes and you see movement behind the shower curtain. (gasps) And you're like... Maybe that was just the steam from the shower. Nope. That was grandma. Yep. You didn't think she'd be watching your naked ass, but she is in there and she is spooking the shit out of you while you are having to wash the shampoo. And then you're like, well, maybe I'll just like peek again. Oh, God, the bubbles are in my eyes. Does this happen to you a lot? I get so scared in this shower. Do you not? Well, we don't have, I have a glass shower door. So oh. there's that. Are you talking about just a breeze making it flap or you're seeing something beyond well, the shower curtain? I think when you're taking a shower and you're a scaredy cat like me, your imagination goes a little wild. Is it the steam? Was there movement? I swear I saw that curtain move. I, no, I, I, so. I feel you. The boys, even the boys in, in their bathroom, they don't have a glass door. And like going in there, like they won't even go to the bathroom with the shower curtain closed. It has nothing to do with going to the see. bathroom. Yeah, but they like. You can't see what's on the other side. Mm-hmm, that it's opaque true. barrier. And then the paranoia uh-huh. sets in. You, you The moment oh, that yeah. thought sets in, uh-huh. that there might like, be someone else someone's in there. Behind there. Someone's behind that curtain. Uh-huh. I know it. And your sensory sensories your senses are flooded with this noise Uh and then that fear takes grip oh yeah i feel you but it's just grandma she's like just grandma bend down grab that soap brit i don't know where the hell she was she was she doing clean your toes she says she's checking for scoliosis (laughs) what are you thinking your toes what is your grandma doing i have no idea what the fuck is your grandma doing in the bathroom brett what is she doing in the bathroom (laughs) Alyssa, do we just talk about leg hairs and grandmas in showers? No, Brett. We talk about true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. That's right. That's why you guys are really here, honestly, truly. And everything in between and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> and beyond. And beyond. Um, I've got some stories tonight. Do you have any stories tonight? I sure do have some stories tonight, Brett. So I have a few stories about... Serendipitous events, uh, strange coincidences, uh, just little signs that there might be more than life, than life, I guess. (laughs) Cool, Um, I love it. And then have you ever heard of the term strange highness? Nope. High strangeness. High strangeness. No. Yeah. Highly strange. Just something is very strange. Yeah. High strangeness. I guess it has a quality of being peculiar, bizarre, or uh, utterly absurd. And it was introduced um, by an astronomer, Dr. J. Allen Hynek, in the 1970s. Did I look? Is he British? It feels British. I didn't have time to actually look him up. I meant to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, and he's an astronomer, so maybe he was into UFOs. Oh. I don't know, but it's like that sort of thing. Like, 
all is strange and bizarre. I guess we could probably say that our podcast is about uh, high strangeness. We just talk about like the kind of... We can add that to our... Yeah, yeah. I just never heard the term before. Anyway, so I stumbled upon that. So these are all stories of high strangeness, but I guess every story we tell is. So this story comes from Marmalade. And Marmalade says, my own quote unquote, high strangeness experience was a major turning point in my life when it came to accepting and believing paranormal phenomena. I have epilepsy. The official diagnosis is partial epilepsy. When I was nine years old, I got into a really bad sledding accident that gave me a terrible concussion. I was out cold for a few minutes. When I hit puberty, I started having stress induced seizures and blackouts in memory. We went to a neurologist, and after some tests and discussion, they hypothesized that my brain growing and changing after having that serious head trauma was causing me to have seizures. The neurologist assured me that most likely I would grow out of them as I got older, and I have for the most part. I'm 27 now and went from having about two a year, even while on medicine, to just one in the last two years, with my only medicine being CBD. And so that was that. I'm typing up this story today because I thought you guys would appreciate it. There is an ongoing trend of epilepsy and religious experiences that researchers are beginning to quantify, and I actually participated in one with the University of Pennsylvania, recounting for them the same story I will tell you now. To this day, I have no other explanation for it other than my account of what happened in the story. Here we go. I grew up in a small rural bumblefuck farm town out in the pinelands of New Jersey. To outsiders visiting for the first time, they'll make jokes like, gee, am I in Kentucky, etc. My hometown's main draw for outsiders is a large state forest with a lake for swimming and tons of hiking and camping. Growing up, I used to ride my bike around this park with friends or often just come home from school and ride it alone to get some exercise. On a day about 11 years ago, I guess, I was riding my bike through the state park trails all alone. It was late fall and there were leaves everywhere. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I got an aura. Auras are your body's way of telling you you're going to have a seizure. They can last for seconds, minutes, or hours, and everyone reports different auras. My traditional auras last for hours and usually involve me having little blackouts and twitches. This one was different, and I've never had one like it since, and it sort of launched my interest into the paranormal. I was no longer an agnostic after that day. The trail I'm on is a paved road. It's an access road for cars and campers and also connects to a road outside the park, so it's frequently used for through traffic. As I'm biking, all of a sudden I feel a hand very lightly touch my shoulder. Like as I'm biking, I'm moving, and I try to turn to see but I literally could not. I was stuck looking forward. Okay, do you understand what's going on there? They're like riding their bike. They want to be able to look over their shoulder. They can't. And they're frozen. Yeah. Yeah. An absolute ethereal... Ethereal? 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 Ethereal. Ethereal? Ethereal. 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 There it it is. That's right. That sounds right. Okay, an absolute (laughs) ethereal calmness comes over me, the likes of which I have not experienced before or since. I smiled. I remember grinning and being so content that somehow this hand was on my shoulder when I was riding my bike. A female voice then whispers in my left ear in the calmest, warmest voice I've ever heard. You're going to have a seizure and you're going to be okay. About a, I know, right? Was that calm? I tried to be. That was good. About a quarter mile down the road, there is a big pile of leaves that presumably the park service had r- raked up. After this female voice whispered in my ear, I woke up in this pile of leaves, a quarter mile from where I first felt the being. I used being, quote unquote, being instead of angel here because it's more inclusive and I honestly have no idea what it was. Was it just my subconscious brain putting on a show for my conscious brain to put my ego at ease? 
To this day, I do not believe that because I have never had any other experience like it. And I've had countless more seizures since then. Statistically, an aura like that would have happened to me again. I woke up in this pile of leaves without a scratch on me. My bike was on the other side of the road, not a twisted heap of metal, but instead leaning neatly on a tree, like I had done it intentionally. There were no other piles of leaves or anything in the park that could have protected me from injury. That was it. And there was absolutely no one around in the park that day. If I had seized up on a bike on an asphalt road, I very well could have died. Left in the park until some local or a ranger drove down that road. And it was the strangest my body has ever felt from a seizure because I was at peace. I was giggling in disbelief, but also happy it happened. Confused, bewildered, blessed. I end up just shouting, thank you, to the sky. (laughs) I hid this story from my parents and friends for six or seven years, finally spilling the beans for the UPenn study. It was absolutely surreal. I've never felt more at peace in my life while simultaneously feeling more confused than ever. Many people report religious experiences with seizures, whether it be similar guardian angel type encounters or seeing dimensional beings or having weird synchronicities in their lives after seizures. Some epileptics will report having deja vu that lasts for minutes or even hours. Epilepsy is not a very well understood neurological disorder. Some of the best epileptic drugs on the market are also used to treat schizophrenia or depression. How these drugs work entirely isn't totally understood. We just know they work. Anyway, I just wanted to share this high strangeness encounter. Years later, I would do DMT, further cementing my belief in extra dimensional beings. To me, this was not a hallucination. I know others will tell me it was. They can believe that, but they weren't there. Uh, And I wasn't conscious to see what was really happening. Truthfully, no one person can ever know what happened to me that day. I don't even know what happened that day. But something highly strange happened that day, and I am 100% sure it saved my life. Wow. I love it. Isn't that a good one? Sorry. Quick. Quick question. Do you know what DMT is? Oh, she's yes. You're asking the perfect person, although I've never done it. DMT is like the uh, ayahuasca. It's like the drug that will take you and you'll go. ah, This would be a nice field trip for us, I think, for the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go on a field trip. Is it? (laughs) Um, No. Yeah. So for those at home who don't know what DMT is, I believe DMT is the active ingredient in ayahuasca. I'm sure, I think they isolate it somehow and then it simulates it. And, um, legend has it, and I'm not sure that like DMT is the chemical that your body releases upon death. So it's the closest you can get to like a almost after or a near death experience that you can get while you're alive and not having to die. And many people report that when you do it, there's beings that are present. Like you get like a guide and there's other people there that like meet you or beings. I don't want to say people. That's kind of like what I'm thinking this epileptic encounter kind of is, is your her brain is going on a different level of existence almost of of level of being and she's experiencing this high level frequency of yeah i don't know energy experience i don't know it's um it's interesting is that how she's able to is that her guardian angel is it you know she said being so maybe like is she thinking it's an alien being like yeah i'm gonna guess that the mention of dmt it sounds like it's a similar just being people describe that maybe that i'll make that a note to try to look into some dmt stories maybe but yeah like some sort of you know a presence and she was like super happy about it you know like it was yes it was was not a scary thing it was like a peaceful this is gonna happen yeah get ready and then freaking something just like landed like Landed her in that pile of leaves. In that pile of soft pile of leaves. Oh, that's awesome. With no witnesses. I I mean, she could have done it herself and blacked out, but still she had a guide to do it or something, you know? Like, it could have been bad. 
You know, we have talked about before individuals who can have premonitions and like a third sight almost. And I wonder, it is curious when she's talking about how a lot of uh, epileptic people have almost, it seems like this third sight of like having seizures on very important monumental days or, you know, seeing different beings. I had never heard that before. This is a first for me. So this is, it's really cool. Like I wrote it down to like, I want to look into that a little bit. People have seizures on different monumental days. That's what you, she said at the very beginning of it is like on, um, before she mentioned that she did the Penn State study, she was saying that people will have epile- epileptic episodes. <laughs> wow. I'm having a hard time saying that on, um, What did she say? Look back at the beginning. There's an ongoing trend of epilepsy and religious experiences. Yeah. Oh, religious experiences. Yeah, religious holidays. (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking like... I was thinking like monumental things like, oh, on 9-11, all these people started having having seizures. (laughs) I mean, that's... Yeah. Oh, but what a big occasion that was. Like, okay, that makes sense. Religious experiences. Okay, but you I, can cut that. It's okay. <laughs> Where I sound like an idiot. I, mean, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> well, I was like, did I read something? I don't know. Like, sometimes oh, I just read and I'm not fuck. absorbing. Um, but yeah, that's that was me. But that's like the that Hildegard, that nun who like was having visions and shit and painted a bunch of stuff, but they just think she was having like migraines with order or a. Right. Yeah. The brain does some yeah. crazy shit. There's some crazy shit going on. And even all of it, the, the, I read something, I read something today, um, that people born between, oh geez, January 29th and February mm-hmm. 5th are like guaranteed to see ghosts. So I want to, I want to test this theory. Oh, I, my brother and my nephew both in that window. Really? I'm got, oh. I've got some questions I have to okay, ask them okay. now. Okay, because I um I don't know if I know anyone in that window at all, and I just that's such it was a so, very small window. Such a very small. <laughs> I was like, damn, I can't even test that. Okay, so that was my first story. Do you have a? I love it. I am so excited to talk to you tonight. So. This past weekend, I did something very uncharacteristic of me, especially during the Rona times. I went on a girl's trip with my book club. We, uh, well, do you ha- want to have any guesses where a rowdy bunch of uh, women might go to party? Oh, the, the book club the, women. Wait, okay, wait, wait, wait you, uh-huh. this past weekend you did this? I did. I did. I didn't tell you because I wanted to save it to oh. tell you right. Okay. Now. I mean, I've got t- a, a bunch of book club women is the <laughs> adjective. Um, <laughs> wait, did you go to that, the Driscoll? We left Texas. Did you go to we Vegas? Went, we traveled. We oh, went oh, to Caliente. Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Wait, are Party you? Pretty hard. <laughs> Geography is what's getting me stumped at the moment. Sorry. Well, exactly. <laughs> so I did not plan this trip. We, I have other women in the book club who are much better planners than me. I just said, I'm going to. I'm booking the ticket. There was a comedy show planned. I'm going. I arrived in Kansas City. I did not know a damn thing. I did not know where it was on the map. I can tell you only just now because there is my map that somebody Wait, you, my did you fly? Off here. I flew. Oh, here. okay, okay. That yeah. was my question. I was like, is that near Texas or Austin? I just assumed it was a weekend trip. This is where my brain. I didn't. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, you did tell flew me you were going out of town. Uh huh. Yeah. Kansas City. Okay, Kansas okay. City. Yeah, didn't know a damn thing. Um. Fun fact, Kansas City is half in Missouri, half in Kansas. I just thought the whole damn thing was in Missouri. Nope, it's right next to Kansas. (laughs) Wait, so there's a Kansas City, Kansas, too? Yeah. What is there? Hold on, let me relook. Yeah, it's like right on the border. It's right there. Why don't we have a geography podcast? (laughs) This shit is fascinating. We're just (laughs) pumping youthful. Um, Fun fact that I learned. Um... 
Kansas City was all about, or sorry, Kansas, the state, was all about prohibition, like, way before it was, like, trendy in the 1920s. Like, in the late 1800s, they were like, no booze in Kansas. Yeah, dry state. But Missouri, Missouri was like, bring on the liquor and booze. So people would cross that border from Kansas to Missouri to get their booze. Anyways, (laughs) yeah, Missouri, heavily... Uh, organized crime. Anyways, not where this story leads really at all. Um, One of the things, though, that I noticed about Kansas City, we were on the Missouri side, if you're wondering, um, all of the buildings are super historic. Like, they have, like, well kept through the centuries now. Um, Well, I guess it's not been really that many centuries. But they've well kept the buildings. Everything's super historic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the whole century. <laughs> um, so we stayed in this really historic hotel that was newly remodeled called Hotel Kansas City. Bum, bum, bum. Um, it's this really old building. And I get we get there and I was like, oh, this place has stories. I know it. So do you remember early on we interviewed Melanie? Yeah. One of the things we talked about is that she's in the book club. Well, she was the perfect helper in this situation. So she goes straight up to the front desk person, Cicely. I know her name is now. And she says, tell me the history of the hotel. And then, of course, has to say, ghosts, tell me about them. (laughs) Cicely was like, okay. Yes, Cicely. (laughs) Okay, so here we go. First, I'm going to tell you a little history. The building that we stayed in was built in the 1920s as a gentleman's social club. All the big wigs in town socialized there, including President Truman and most organized crime bosses. The first five floors were different meeting rooms for important men to rub elbows and smoke cigars and whatnots. And then the top two floors were dedicated for the indoor pool, gym, handball court, All of those things. So shortly after the social club opened, they got an application from a woman named Bertha Goodwin. This strong-willed woman decided that she wanted to be a part of the club, too. Why should men have all of the fun? And they didn't deny her application right away. They just said, and I quote, At a later date, when plans for lady members are perfected, we'll consider your application. Well, Bertha died before they ever considered her application, and women were not even accepted into the social club until 1975. So um, the social club in 2002 moved locations, and then in 2019, they renovated it for this hotel. The doors opened for the hotel in 2020, just recently, right? Well, during the renovations, the people doing opening the hotel, decide to put a painting of Bertha in every single room, kind of like a middle finger to all of those misogynistic dicks. In every Literally. single room? Every single room. Okay. I'm going to post it in the is, show it's notes. It's the same it's picture? This, it's the same exact picture. It's this red-haired, wild-eyed woman. I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Okay. So now on to the ghost story. Are you ready? The story goes, Cicely tells us, the story goes that the hotel had a guest who stayed on the 13th floor. Now, I don't know if you remember, but the 13th floor is auspicious for being haunted as fuck, right? In all remember? hotels. And, right. All hotels. Okay, yes. I mean, new that hotel in New Orleans completely tried to erase that there wasn't mm-hmm. even a 13th floor. Okay, so she's checking out, and she mentions to Cicely, the front clerk, she says, I am a medium. When I was in my room, I was confronted by the spirit of a woman who'd drowned there. And now the medium thought that it was odd because the hotel doesn't have a pool. Maybe it was the bathtub she drowned in. But then Cicely informs the medium that actually the floor you stayed on was the floor where there was the five-lane indoor pool for the social club. Uh So, Cicely tells Mel and I that to this day, you can go up there and see the tiles from the 1920s when this was, like, original. They're still up there on this floor. Um, So, what do Mel and I do? 
after midnight, we decide to go up to the 13th floor and look at these old ass tiles. And of course, since I have the podcast with you, I brought my phone recorder. Do you want to hear it? Okay. I do. Is it worth Okay. Is it worth listening? Hey. I mean, yes. Okay. It's worth listening okay. if I say it is. Of course. I do want to. I... <laughs> yes, please. Is what Here's I wanted to say. That's right. Okay. Alyssa, as you're listening, keep your ears peeled okay. to the end of the clip. Here we go. Okay. Mel and I are on the 13th floor. We've heard that you can find pool tiles at the end of the hallway. So we're going to investigate. It's after midnight. Oh, there they are. You can see the pool tiles from the 1920s, they're scratched and cracked, but still here. Yeah, it's almost like they're here and then a wall was built around them. The pool tiles are? No, that's just stair access. It's like the pool is right here. Yeah. How old are How old are these tiles? Well, if the. Did you hear it? Okay, I heard a. Wait, okay. You. Because uh, I can't. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I enhanced it for you. Okay. Okay, I enhanced it for you. Well, actually. We're gonna re-listen regular audio and then I enhance it for you. Okay. And you tell me if you can if you can hear what I hear. How old are How old are these tiles? No. Did you hear Wait, it? Wait, do it again. Okay, I'm gonna enhance it now. How old are How old are these tiles? Did you hear it? Do I need to back it do up? Do it again. 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 Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's go. I think it's right. Oh, no, that's too far. Okay, we're going to go here. How old are How old are these tiles? Did you hear it? Is it saying help me? Yes! That is really it's freaky. It's fucking saying help me. Okay, I'm going to play it again. I'm going to play it again. Oh, and then it gets f- freaky again. I'll tell you here after. Because uh, it's not Mel Shh. saying... No, it's not Mel because she's loud because she's whispering. Like I, you can hear her whispering because it's like this dark, dimly lit hallway. So she's like whispering. But then we go into this stairwell. That's why the audio kind of changes. We're in a stairwell right there with the tile still there. And that's where we hear it. I, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it when it was happening. It wasn't until I re-listened to the audio that I heard it. Okay, do, do you want to hear yeah, it? Yeah, I time? need to hear it one more time. And I want to hear it because okay. Mel's saying, How old is it or something, right? Mm-hmm. At the, mm-hmm. But she's not. At the same, around the same time, okay. which is why I know it's not Mel. How old are How old are these tiles? How old are Oh, that is really freaky. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe. I can't believe. That I got of EVP. And you know I'm really shitty about hearing EVPs. Like, and I, normally I'll hear them and I'm like, that sounds like gibberish to me. But that was clear as a fucking bell to me. Yes. Right? No, that really does sound very clear. And then when, <sighs> that last time, it's definitely separated from what Mel is saying. Because the first time it almost sounds like maybe she, like, it's hard to discern. But man. Okay. So the medium... So, like, sees the drowned woman is on that 13th floor. And it, yeah, I think I. I mm. Why did you let me start my story? Why did you even let me read a story? <laughs> this is so good. What the fuck? You set me up? I'm a fucking paranormal investigator now, I guess. Shit. Well, I'm I the editor. Know. So, guess what? Your story is going first this week, Britt. <laughs> no, 
like, yours is good too. Oh, uh, I ha- cannot tell you how hard it was for me not to text you right away and be like, Alice, ha! Okay, you said it got freakier though. I need to know what happened next. What do you mean freakier? I thought you just Did said it got that? freakier. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So as I'm listening... <laughs> I mean, not that much bigger. As I'm listening, um, re-listening to the audio, though, I hear the, help me. And then you know how it completely cuts off. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I paused it right there. For 30 seconds, there is complete blank air. Nothing was recorded. And then 30 seconds, and then after the 30 seconds, it starts recording all, all over again. Like we're still in the hallway or whatever. Where did that 30 seconds go? Why did my recorder stop recording? What? Where did your recorder go? I know, right? <gasps> it was, and it was right after the EVP. It was, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, so good. Is, okay. Did you find anything else? You just know that the medium, you didn't figure out who this person is who drowned in the hotel. I don't know who drowned. Kansas well, City. and because it was like, it's a bunch of like big name big wigs who like, they've got all the secrets there. Like yeah. okay. every secret there. So if a woman drowned there, nobody's going to, that's not going to hit the newspapers. We won't know. And uh, is, did Bertha drown there? It was Bertha, no, Bertha murdered because they didn't want to let her in. Well, like, well, Bertha was never accepted, so I don't know if she was even fucking allowed in the door. I think this could be some kind of like mistress situation that was okay. swept under the rug. Or and nobody no, even knew. Maybe they offered Bertha a one-time trial membership. <laughs> Bertha, come in and try the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, get rid of this loudmouth, pushy broad. Like, How me. do you like the pool, oh. Bertha? And then, oh, Bertha. You know what is interesting? So, Mel, kudos to her. She did a lot of legwork for the research for my stories. <laughs> <laughs> Paid intern, unpaid intern. Thanks, Mel. Um, she looked up Bertha right away, though, because she's like, who's this badass bitch? Yeah. Nothing. There's one super grainy photo from the 1920s of Bertha, and there's no other information about her. So, honestly, you never know. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, obviously, you didn't help her. You just had a nice party book club. Did you see? That was it? <laughs> like, okay. What do you mean? You yeah. What do you mean that was it? I just fucking shared an EVP with you real time. Okay, no. But you didn't hear anything <laughs> real time. You saw the you saw the tiles. Oh yeah, yes, while I was it. up there, the, I and I'll post pictures of the tiles too because they're very um, awesome and old. And it literally like they've built walls around these tiles, so it's like pool tile, and then here's the wall for the stairwell, and it's it's so really cool. Almost, I'm glad they did that. Are you like standing in the pool, like? There's no pool. It's like a ho- imagine a normal hotel floor with ha- long hallway doors in rows. You, we walk to the end of the hallway, and on that far wall, there are pool tiles that they've kept up there. What I'm asking though is, are yes. you like standing in the pool at this point? Is it the inside the pool oh, tiles, or is lo- it the walls like that were outside? Like you know, you walk in, there's like a oh, pool deck and stuff. I'm fairly certain that it is the upper part and not the like inside of in the inside pool. the pool okay so yeah just... i'm i'm fairly certain it's like the outside oh wall God, there. yeah man i think i might need to get a recorder up in here well also you know what this has made me decide you and i second owned business in conjunction with skeletals we have to go haunted hotel hunting like it was really fun. I know. I yeah. We just need to yeah get that sponsorship. Those miles. <laughs> no, I know. Those, those I know. Frequent flyer Travel miles. Around. No, I think this is a great business model. <sighs> I love it. Stay in the most luxurious haunted hotels in the world. But was it a fancy hotel? Is it nice? It was. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. We ended up on the fourteenth floor, which is the floor above. <gasps> oh, uh, where it used to be uh, the racquetball courts, or sorry, the handball courts. And so the it was this like crazy lofted ceiling, or you know, high rise ceiling. It was really cool. Oh, that's cool. That sounds really cool. And this happened on the thirteenth floor. On the thirteenth floor. This is why they don't put thirteenth floors on buildings because they're haunted as fuck. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. I love it. 
Good job, Brett. Thanks. Well, thanks. Sh- thanks. Should I even bother Hitting reading the street, your story? Finding the ghosts. It's good. Oh, All right. Well, I give up. <laughs> now you have to tell uh, another story. <laughs> fine. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe I don't have any coincidences. I don't know why I thought I had stories about coincidences. Coincidentally, these are not about coincidences. <laughs> <laughs> They're just about weird stuff. Okay, so um, Violet says, I know this is going to sound weird, but one night I was about to sleep when I noticed my room seemed get, to get slightly brighter. I turned around in bed, and next to my bed was a blindingly bright light entity. It didn't touch the walls or ceilings, though. I couldn't make out if it looked like a human because it hurt too much it look, to look at, and it was only there for a few seconds. I hid under my blanket in fear and pretty much stayed like that until I fell asleep. I tried to convince myself it was nothing. But a few weeks later, I was in my room when I had some heart issue, which my doctors think is SVT. Didn't Google that. Sinovancotova. Okay, it doesn't matter. And I ran down to get my mom. Oh, actually, maybe it does matter. I don't know what the fuck that is, because I didn't expect the next sentence to be ran. All right, you ready? Yeah. Super ventricular tachycardia. Oh, okay. CVT. Abnormally fast or erratic heartbeat. Okay. So a little a little fluttering of the heart, some tachycardia, and I ran down to get my mom. Whilst she was calling for an ambulance, she yelled for my sister to come down. My sister later said she was running past my room and briefly looked in and saw a blinding bright light figure on my bed in the daytime. I honestly don't know what to think of this. Ooh, we hear of shadow people all the time, but what are these blinding lights? Interesting. But she's survived. She's living to tell the tale. Yeah. Are shadow people really the good ones? And the light people are the bad ones? Like, you're gonna die. Yeah. Death is not really a black hooded person. It's this bright white light. So when people are like, I see the light, they're like, it's death. <laughs> yes. And they're sucking the light force out of the person. And that's oh, why they're freaking shining and glowing. <laughs> Solving shit left and right. Ah, Death is a light beam. Run away from the light. Okay. Run away Holy from shit. the light, Death people. Death is a light beam. Love that. Make that into shirt. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to write that down and be like, what the fuck does that mean? Later. <laughs> I love Death it. Death is a light beam. That's how we roll. Okay. I have one more short one, but you tell your next story first. And then oh, I'll perfect. Come. We'll end on your little, your little guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to transport you back to Kansas City again. (gasps) We went to a comedy show. Don't worry. In the comedy show, everyone had to show proof of vaccination or you get negative PCR tests. So it was like fairly comfortable, not a full show. I just had to preface this because I'm a careful person. Okay. I don't think anyone listening to this is at (laughs) risk of catching the Rona from you. It's okay. It might sound like we're in the room with you, but. No. I don't do these things normally. Got it. So you, the judgment. I'll say. You're, you're <laughs> anticipating. Exactly. I know. Got the it. anticipated judgment. Get off my back, people. Okay. So the show is at a theater called The Midland. Just to give you a visualization, when you walk into this old-timey theater, it feels like you're genuinely stepping back into time. They've kept all the original character. There are ornate, dark, mahogany walls, and all the paintings that are hung around are just old and creepy as shit. Like at the top of the stairs, there is this little girl that I swear has dead eyes that follow you. Just wherever you're standing, it looks like she's staring at you with dead eyes. Maybe it's a and painting then of a dead girl because they used to do that. That's what I said. And then in the lobby, there's like this old Ebenezer Scrooge dude that who they said was a lady. I think that it was just creepy. So anyway, my, I noticed my brain immediately pictured like the Ducktales Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> it's not Ebenezer. I don't know. And I was picturing a painting of a fucking duck. 
<laughs> dressed in a top hat in this place. I am sorry. Creepier than that. Okay. Just slightly. Yeah. No, that makes more sense. Okay. So this is what I'm met with as I walk in. Of course, first stop at the bar. So as the bartender is pouring my very generous pour of wine, I'm like, Dan, this place is pretty creepy. And he goes, oh, yeah, it's haunted. And I said, what? And I look behind, crazy long line of people. And I was like, I'm, I'll be back. I'm coming back. And so I left for the show. Intermission comes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to get more wine and talk to this bartender. So I hover around the bar till everybody is like, the line is gone. And I was like, please tell me the ghost story. Here is it. So here in the is 1930s, it or here it is? Where is it, Brett? Where is it? <laughs> here it goes. It is here. <laughs> the story. <laughs> Imagine you've had a uh, three glasses of wine okay. like I did that night. Here we go. <laughs> story time. In the 1930s, there was a janitor named Frank Alexander who was cleaning up after a show. It was either a silent film or a vaudeville show, which is what happened in the 1930s. And he comes across this package in the balcony. Frank thought that it was some kind of weird trash that somebody left behind. So he grabs it and he's walking down the stairs towards the lobby and the package explodes. <gasps> Turns out it was a stick of dynamite that killed poor Frank. Wait, what the fuck? What? He mm -hmm. just, where did he find this mm -hmm. package? Mm -hmm. in, the in the balcony. In the balcony. In the, ba oh my in God. the balcony. Walking down to the lobby, it explodes. Oh, my God. So there's an article written by Randy Mason in the KC Star, and I'm going to read a clip from that okay. clip. I don't know. What yeah, sure. An that. Shirt, I sure. Believe. So why attack a movie house? Randy asks. Sorry, I have to get my other piece of paper where it is written. The answer, amazingly enough, was because of feuding projectionists. <gasps> In the 1930s, two different labor unions handled the business of playing films in Can on Kansas City screens. For months, there had been incidents, threats, and even small explosives detonated at theaters around town. The Midland Blast, intended to intimidate, turned deadlier than planned. There were three men responsible for Alexander Frank Alexander's death two who built the bomb, and one who planted it. They were quickly apprehended and sentenced to life in prison. Since this incident, several people have spotted Frank, the ghost. Um, so uh, not only the bartender who I spoke with, but apparently a wedding guest who... Uh, was at the theater for a wedding, saw a man in clothing he described as dated and disheveled. When he looked again, the man was gone. Several people have claimed that they sent someone is near them and get the chills. So then I asked my bartender friend, I said, well, have you experienced anything? And he said early when he was hired, there was one time he was standing in the theater and a cold rush went through him, giving him the chills. And then he said he refuses to be in that theater alone ever since then. So then I walked around the theater looking for just creepy art. Oh, my gosh, there is this one. I'm going to post some photos. It was really creepy. But I, this is very exciting. I did meet a local named Arthur who said that they worked at the Hotel Ambassador and that they have had a couple of spooky incidences but haven't actually seen any ghosts. And I mentioned that. I have the podcast, co-host the podcast, Skeletales. And they said, oh, yeah, I listened to that one. What? <laughs> yes, in Kansas City. <laughs> a what? complete random person there. Hopefully they were telling the truth because I got real excited <laughs> and screamed in their face. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, Arthur. So in conclusion, Kansas City in a nutshell, just an old haunted fucking place sounds like you had a good time the end yeah it was really fun i had a blast actually i ate great food 
drank way too much, walked around. Well, there was they have a really awesome library there because that's what you do when you're with book club girls. <laughs> that's what I was like. Where would you go? I don't know. Missouri, can't, Missouri sounds like absolutely the book club destination. <laughs> Yeah, book club destination of the world, world is Kansas, Kansas City, City, Missouri. <laughs> every book club. No, it was so fun. And like, I definitely have a better appreciation for this city than I did before. I've been to Hannibal, <laughs> Missouri, and I had a nice time. It's where um, Mark Twain is from. Oh, nice. Samuel no, Clemens. I had no idea. Um, oh. Okay, wait, back to the ghost story was what we were talking about. Oh, yes. So this Ghosties. poor old... Frank. Frank. Is he yes. just like mopping floors for eternity? That <clears throat> seems miserable. Word on the street goes is that he is a super friendly ghost. And when he shows up, it is always very pleasant and friendly. He he doesn't scare people or, you know, intimidate or haunt or, you know, do mean things. He's always very friendly. That's good. But I mean, that's not what I asked. Is he... Oh, sorry. What was your <laughs> Oh, to mop floors for eternity. Yes. Um, that's what he has to do. He has to clean up after all of these messy motherfuckers. Oh, that must leaving be so shows. frustrating because he probably can't actually oh, touch any of the mess. And then he's just like, he's like reaching for somebody. the same piece of popcorn for oh, God. <laughs> eternity. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Frank. Frank. That's the saddest part of it all. What the fuck? Just blowing each other up because of the projectionists? Missouri oh, has man, a it real was a dark... ruthless time. Ruthless. <laughs> they do have a little bit of a dark history. Yeah. yeah. The Union, yeah. bombs in fucking movie theaters. Who knew? Yeah. I, know. I know. I think it was just to, and you know, like it said, it was just used as an intimidation, you know, technique to be like, oh, we got you fuckers, like a bad prank gone wrong. I mean, it's just, it's just a stick of dynamite. It's just one little <laughs> stick of dynamite. Like, come I on. Know. It was fuck? just for intimidation. Like, what? What? It's uh, awful. No. Sorry, no. I shouldn't laugh, Frank. Sorry, Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, I mean, I would think a stick of dynamite would do some fucking damage. Like, no, I guess I don't yeah, know. I mean, about. and in the balcony, like, they're like, I mean, cutthroat yeah. projectionists. Okay. Haven't you heard? Well, let's lift ourselves out of that. So this one actually, this one actually is about coincidences. <laughs> You know, did I promise coincidences <laughs> earlier on? I, coincidentally. I coincidentally, this one actually is about coincidences. <laughs> um, and this one is from Anton. And Anton says, I met a girl one summer at camp. We hung out once or twice, and then I stopped talking to her. Three years later, I went to a giant concert that the city does every year in the park. Thousands of people in attendance. I was waiting for some friends just inside one of the three entrances when I randomly thought about that girl. I hadn't spoken to her for years, so I texted her to ask if she was coming to the show. Right when I hit send, I looked up, and she was walking in right in front of me. I was blown away. I was also meeting up with someone to buy acid at the show later. When I told this girl what had happened, she immediately just asked if I wanted to buy some acid. So I felt like I had to. It led to the first time I've meditated successfully. There's an unknown sixth sense for sure. The end. Nice. Oh, my God. It's so good. Okay. I, first of all, just have to say, I love that this story didn't end and we were soulmates and had to live happily ever after. Nope. It was like, hey, what are the chances? I just thought about you. Sure, I'll buy acid from you. <laughs> the end. Or like he kind of felt like he got peer pressured into buying acid, he but he already had plans to buying acid. Like I guess, so much. I acid. guess I'll buy your acid. Like, and then it led to a deep state of meditation. Like I don't. Oh God, it's so good. It okay meant to be regardless of how high his ass was. That is a strange coincidence that. Someone was thinking of them, texting them, and looks up. There they are, meant to be. Absolutely, absolutely. And in three months or whatever, like or three years, I hadn't seen that person in three years. Yeah, I I agree. I um. So that's what attracted me to the story, and then just the little um acid was just a little <laughs> bonus of weirdness at the little end. Little cherry there. on top. Yeah, I do have a strange coincidence that this reminds me of. 
Do I have time to tell you this or not? Oh my God. These are my favorite when they pop in your head. Please tell. Okay. 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 Please do. Oh my God. I think it involves acid. Does it? <laughs> oh, please. You definitely okay. have to tell this story. Now. I don't know if it involves acid. It's not. It might. I, some sort of <laughs> something. So um, I went to a very small college and um, I've said it before. Have I said this before? This college I went to, four to one guy girl ratio. Very like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of guys, very few Mm -hmm. girls. The odds were good, but the goods were odds. Odd. Uh, Okay. (laughs) So, anyway, um, my aunt and uncle lived in the same town I went to college with, my cousins and everything. So, my cousin rode crew. And every time I ran into like one of his friend's moms, she's like, oh my God. Scott goes to WPI. You have to meet Scott. You've got to meet this guy, Scott. Oh my God. And I was like, oh, no, thank you. Like they were like, just kept trying to like set. <laughs> like they wanted to set, set the me two up you with up. this guy, Scott. Oh, yeah. gotcha, and I gotcha. was like, oh yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh my God, Scott has to be like the biggest dork in the world. Um, or, or whatever. I had preconceptions. I was like, it's a nerd college. They're all yeah, They were always yeah. trying like, and it was like repeated repeatedly. And then I was at one of his, my, my cousin's crew matches and they were like, oh my God, oh my God, Scott is here. I'm going to have to introduce you to Scott. And I was like, oh, okay. And then it never happened. And I was like, literally, I'm like, I don't want to meet Scott. Like I would like told I'm like I I I'll told my cousin Tory, I'm like, like I have zero desire to meet this kid yeah like I don't uh-huh. want to have to try to make friends even though it was a small school but I'd never he was like a year or two older than me I just knew this name and it's, it's like Scott um, Scott Castell Scott Castell you got to meet Scott Castell so anyway it was maybe weeks later months later I don't know it was ongoing for like months I think that my this this woman was always telling me that I had to meet this person and I was over at one of my my next door neighbor's houses like after a party I came home my next door neighbors were all hanging out on their porch and they're like come on up so I come on up and there's um some kids I didn't know there and one of these kids he'd uh he, he was partaking maybe in some hallucinogenics of some sort. I don't know if it was acid. <laughs> it was acid. It was acid. And the kid was <laughs> Scott Cassell. And I was like, oh, damn. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Like, you're the, the, you're the guy that, like, this person has been trying, Mrs. Sweeney has been trying to hook me up with, like, for all these months, whatever. And he's like, oh, my God, you're, like, Alyssa, because they, they on that the side, too, thing. it was the yeah. same thing, that we were both like, no, we're good, thank you, but, like, kept trying to to, to, to have us meet up. Um, and so, whatever, I went home. I had a track meet the next morning that I was running okay. late for. And I walked out of my apartment, the three-story triple-decker in the armpit of New England, Yeah, walked yeah. out of my apartment, and as I am leaving, this car slows down, and inside is Scott Cassell, who happened to be driving by at the same time. And I, like, didn't even ask. I was, like, just got into his car because I was, like... You're, like, take me yes, to the I'm, meet. like, I got to get to this meet. <laughs> I am running late. I hopped right in, and he um, gave me a ride up there. And then the long story short is I dated him for, like, two years after that. Even oh, though I was, shit. like, no, no, no. And then I met him right Miss Costello or whatever Ms. her name was was fucking right. Miss Sweeney. And we lived happily ever dating for two dating years. Dating for two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, it was a very good story at the time, but I don't know. It didn't come out as smoothly at the time. I can't remember. No, man. Fuck it. <laughs> anyway, Britt, if you have any stories of coincidences or high strangeness or strange mm-hmm. highness, which I don't know. If Haunted I hotels. Ooh, some EVP. Kansas City hauntings. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. EVPs would be perfect for calling in our hotline. Yeah. 302-689-DEAD. 302-689-3323. Yeah, just th- put your phone up. Actually, how would you do that? You know, just call us and tell us you have one, and maybe we'll like call you. Or back. you could email hey. us the audio file. Oh God, at perfect! That's so much podcast. easier. <laughs> you can <laughs> at skeletalespodcast at gmail dot com. We are also on all the socials. Um, you can find us there at Instagram, 
Facebook community is Skeletales community. Facebook podcast, I don't fucking know anymore. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Alyssa, Twitter. Yeah. Pause. No. Right now. I have a hot brag. <gasps> Are you ready? Somebody wrote us a review. <gasps> And it's a positive one, oh. five stars. So I'm going to oh, read good. it. <laughs> uh, on Apple Podcast, you can write in reviews. So if you want to do that, do that right now. Uh, this comes from Jen Xmas, and she says, "Love you, ladies. I am definitely in the. I quote, I'm a total scaredy cat, but can't get enough spooky stories. Oh my god, girl, we are in the same boat. <laughs> okay, sorry, I interrupted." Total scaredy cat that can't get enough spooky stories. Weird, I know. The, this podcast is so awesome. The stories are chilling, but you ladies are hilarious. The episode about Meep the cat had me cracking up with Alyssa's cat sounds. So funny. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, Did I so not yes, read that to you already? No. Alyssa. <laughs> You were going to, but then I we were going over on time. So I said, let me do it at another date. Oh. So I'm doing it now. So, I mean, holy shit. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so you can go to Apple Podcast if you want to write in a review, too. Or honestly, just send us a mes- message um, saying that we're cool, and I'll probably read that on air, too, because I love a good hot breath. That is um, amazing. Yes. Thank you, Jenny Xmas, for writing in. You can also rate us on Spotify if you fi- can figure out how. It's a, like a treasure hunt <laughs> where your reward is, re- is I rating us. Think of, I follow us on Spotify. I haven't figured it out. Anyways, the complicated web that is following and liking and reviewing, you can do it. Yeah, it's like the new Wordle. To figure out how to give us five stars on Spotify. So fun. <laughs> for your day. Um, I love it. Anything else, Brent? Um. Oh, yes. Just one thing. Okay, one last okay, thing okay. that you forgot, Alyssa. Yeah. Haunt, haunt y'all later. Haunt you later. Good night. Good night. <laughs>